start rolling here for three, two, one. Well, Mayor Bob, welcome back. Uh, welcome to 2020. Happy New First Year, off. everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Happy New Year. Uh, Mayor's Monday here at WSAU, WSAU.com. Does it feel like a new year yet here in Wausau since we since we last talked? Not it's yet. It's just good to have things back to normal, kind of, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a birthday coming up, and it's it's just another year, if that mm -hmm. makes any sense. And it's it's amazing how fast time flies. Yeah, again, another year um, under the belt here for the administration. You and I were just talking a little bit. Uh, year number three brought some more records as yeah. far as economic development and growth goes. We've touched on this before, but now we've finally got the hard data. So uh, tell us what happened in Last 2019. Last year, $116 million worth of new construction and growth. Again, that's another excellent year. Three years in a row for economic development, job creation, our jobless rate is less than 3%. It's like 2.9 or something like that. Jobs are out there if people want them. Uh, the good news is things are going very strong here economically and so many other ways in a positive way here in the city of Wassa. And as I've said before here on this program, we're going to keep going just to improve the future of the city. It's part of that vision. And again, everything goes according to plan. And let's face it, folks, a lot of that is life. You can have the best made plans and all the experts saying you're doing the right thing and then something could happen where it doesn't work. The point is you keep trying and we don't spend a lot of money in the process of doing that either. Economic development is the future of our city and some may not like it. Some like, well, why are you investing in this money? Because we're gonna get a good payoff for it in the end within a certain amount of time. And if we don't take care of it, another community certainly will snatch it up. And I'm all for the entire region. You know, if it's good for Wassa, overall it's good for all of us. But if I can get it to come to Wassa, that's my position, and that's what we should be doing. Yeah, and that's definitely going to be you know a focus as you go into 2020. Here, we already had uh, economic development last week, a very busy agenda. Again, projects, 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 right. stuff that's in the pipeline and things like that. So. It might not always be right there on the surface, but there's certainly people working behind the scenes to make those things happen. Well, and here's the thing too. Again, unlike ever before, never before, we broadcast, everything is out there in the open for folks to see. And really when people have a chance to hear these different things going on or different plans, you know, you have that right to question it, that type of thing. And most people seem to be on board. They understand why it's being done. Again, this is for the future of our city. If we do nothing, we know what's going to happen. We're going to die. And whether people want to admit that or realize that or not, I don't know what to tell them. Hence the reason why, like I said, this is three years now of record historic economic development and growth. A few years ago, if folks remember here at City Hall how things used to be in the culture and the morale here used to be and some things that uh, should have been being done differently. Now there's a sense of accountability. City Hall is being more run and more efficiently. There's a sense of integrity. I've said this before numerous times, we've got the best staff in the world and everybody is cognizant as far as doing a good job. That in turn attracts new businesses and attracts new residents. Because again, we're looking at the future of our city. It all ties in together. And you know, I've said this before, I love what I do. I hope I can come back. There's still a lot of work to be done, but it's, it's really amazing the amount of things that have gotten done here in the last three and a half years. I've had two good city councils who've seen the way as far as it's being portray, uh, portrayed, presentations, etc. There haven't been any major surprises. We just want to keep on doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And what were some of those big projects that were pushed through in 2019. I mean, you said another Further record expansion year. on our business uh, campus, uh, biggest growth, if you will, over the last 20 years. Completion of Thomas Street. Uh, now, I know right now the, the traffic lights aren't there. You know, folks, that's not the city's fault. It's tariffs that were caused. We thought it might have been our supplier because we were better than you know what as far as like, <laughs> why can't we get these now? We had them ordered way in advance and they had ordered them in advance. But unfortunately, due to the circumstances beyond our control, the traffic lights will be up here and, you know, in, uh, by the end of January. But Thomas Street is another project that got done, First Avenue, uh, other infrastructure that's being addressed, different roads, 
different systems, if you will, a new fire station. And again, when we had this all happening, a lot of that was just that better communication between the mayor's office, the city council, and employees. And getting the city council out to just not tour city hall and talk to the employees and the directors here, department heads, but go out, go out to police, fire, Department of Public Works, water, sewage. Go out there and talk to our folks and our employees, see what their jobs and missions are, and oh yeah, look at our infrastructure that is literally falling apart. Now is the time to do a lot of this infrastructure because interest rates are next to nothing. We've had three record years of economic growth. You strike it while you can, and a lot of that, again, is a, an investment in our future. I've said this before, the Band-Aid approach that might have been done in the past, it's finally caught up with us. And the thing is, we get that message out. We have public hearings, hear what folks have to say. We don't please everybody, but the message gets out if people are willing to sit there and to learn the facts and educate themselves. And don't follow social media. You know, and most people understand the reason why we've been doing so much of what we've been doing the last couple of years. The Riverfront Park is another perfect example that got completed this year. Uh, and the next expansion going to both the north end of the river and the south end going to downtown. You know, I can't say enough. The next couple of years, the riverfront and places downtown are going to be transformed. And it's all good. It contributes to the tax base for the future of our city. It mm -hmm. creates jobs. This is what economic development does. And to those that say, oh, we shouldn't be spending any money, realistically, because I mean, I know there was a time when I served as an older person. Well, if a business wants to come to town, I can understand the city paying for like uh, roads leading to it, uh, construction, if you will, as far as the utilities, and maybe even forgive us the taxes for a little while. And that's not how it's done anymore. It really isn't. If you want to attract businesses here, you have to reach out to them. There has to be incentives provided. I think it's it's just the way it is everywhere nowadays. The, the trick is, is knowing when to say no. We gotta make sure we got a good return on our investment. And I think people would really be surprised at the amount of things that we have said no to. It's too rich for our blood or mm -hmm. we're not getting enough of a return. It's business. Again, we try to put it out there in a public specter for them and everybody to see what's going on. And we really haven't had the problems. Mm -hmm. And we'll continue doing what we're doing. Absolutely, and and that uh, the meeting that uh, back in December where we we saw you know that vision for the second phase of River Life and some of the reconstruction and things like that. I think uh, first off, one of the things that really jumped out at people was you know drawings for a second tower right there going into downtown because obviously that's you know that's Wausau's skyline right, right there. And now that doesn't mean that's going to happen, but. It would certainly be something that would, another thing that would really put Wausau on the map if it does. Well, you know, over the last three and a half years, we've either updated or created uh, nine, 10, maybe even 11 different types of plans for throughout the city, or we've updated, if you will, like our comprehensive plan, similar to a strategic plan. First time it's been updated since 2005, that got completed. Our uh, zoning code, First time since 1967, that was very detailed and very lengthy. That got completed for the first time. In addition to other plans on the south end of the river, the north end of the river, downtown, you know, and these are plans for the future and the development that could possibly be coming. Will it happen? I don't know. But the thing is, we do have the plans in place for developers or staff to take a look at and make a presentation on. And that wasn't always there before either. I get very proud of our planning staff and our economic development staff and what they do in making the city go forward. And then the other part of that plan that people really, you know, kind of opened their eyes or latched onto was some of those townhome developments, basically creating almost a new neighborhood mm -hmm. right near downtown in some, you know, unused land and maybe moving some other buildings around, but basically creating an entirely new neighborhood right there by the river. You look at the way people are moving these days and you talk about being forward looking, that's kind of what people want. That's what they want. It, and I know, I, I've said this before, I know my wife and I are kind of looking maybe to downsize one day. Um, you know, we've got new development going on on North and on the river with townhomes, a possibility. Also off of downtown, you know, 
it really is a good time. It's very almost a prosperous time here in the city of Wausau. And I'm also a realist. That's the reason why I'm trying to get the infrastructure done and taken care of now that is needed because who knows how long the economy will last. I mean, you got to be prepared, so to speak. And in moving forward, we're doing fine. Our debt is more than manageable. We're doing paying things off very aggressively. Sometimes I wish we could get a better shake on that. Again, social media, folks can say and do whatever they want and there's no accountability. But the thing is, we still reach out, still try to get our message out, still have the public hearings, address the media. Mm -hmm. uh, you folks have said this too, as far as you've never had accessibility here like this before, be it with myself or with department heads who are the real experts on a lot of those things. But again, it's just really a good time here in the city of Wassa. There's always work that needs to be done. We've got different issues like many big cities in America and we'll keep on trying to address them and be proactive before it gets worse, which overall, for the most part, we've been able to do. And of course, do it all without having snowball fights. Correct. <laughs> I am just amazed by the reaction that video had. Um, you know, and I guess I'm more surprised at the different things that people get upset about. I had mentioned this before, but uh, from a national level, the amount of calls and emails that we receive, some very nasty and vulgar. And purposely, I called every one of them back from across the country after we created that video, you know, to turn a, a negative into a positive, to show that we do have a sense of humor, and to kind of chide the national media as far as, guys, you should really, before you report a story, make sure it's honest and truthful mm -hmm. and correct. I was surprised because locally, everybody knew about the ordinance. It's never been an issue. I guess that's the power of the internet and the power of the media. If you follow things, I don't know what people want to watch. Because of this, I got to learn there's a lot of different websites out there, barstool.com, <laughs> whatfinger.com. And again, the thing that's sad about the internet, it doesn't have to be factual, it doesn't have to be accurate, and certainly doesn't have to be truthful. That makes jobs here kind of difficult. But mm -hmm. the thing is, again, we go out there and reach into a positive way, try to show that we have some fun with it. And that video in particular, has really been absolutely a, a wonderful type of thing to do. And for the record, that hit to my head was legit. We did not choreograph or plan <laughs> that. I understand our Deputy Chief Matt Barnes is signing things, the one that got away. <laughs> but he also said I was a very good sport too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, because I know that's one thing that'll come up here this week, possibly removing Snowball from the ordinance and, you know, hopes of, uh, hopes of preventing something like this from happening again. In a, I guess in a the main reason why we're doing it, it seems like, now I've been here eight years, and it seems like every two and a half to three years, the story comes back, not to the level that it did this time, because the national media really, why they picked on Wausau or, or singled us out, because it's an ordinance in, in every community. And this was created back, we actually looked at the charter, our city attorney shared this with me the other day, it was actually on the city charter back in 1872. But this official ordinance was created in 1962. I was born in 66, I don't have that type of power. Um, you know, and there's nothing wrong with having some fun, but I guess we're just surprised at the power of the internet. But it should be a little bit more responsible too. Mm -hmm. And I wish there was a better accountability, because you know, we're all held accountable here in government, and we should be. We should set an example. But you know, that should be all the way around, too. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll uh, maybe next time it comes around, it'll be, uh, it'll be Stevens Point's problem or Marsh Shield since they have the uh, ordinance on the books as well. Well, the one thing, too, I was gonna say, and when I address the Public Health and Safety Committee on this, you know, I'm like, you know, folks, you're the ones that create the, the ordinances and the laws and policy. I said, I don't care if you want to remove snowball or not, projectile, the police will still have the power if it, they determine. You know, I think in 15 years they tackled it, cited somebody twice. Um, from what I understand, one time a rock was packed with, or excuse me, a snowball was packed with rocks thrown at a car window. Another time was an ice chunk. Now, you know, honestly, they can be dangerous, okay? Mm -hmm. 
but the police have that discretion. They do a great job. They're not out there citing everybody. Um, kind of similar when we got taken a task here a few months ago as far as a new homeless ordinance or to get people loitering in our parking garages. And we had to create a law to enforcement because people forget if somebody had ever did get hurt in one of our garages, be it very unlikely a homeless person or a stalker or a vandal, that type of thing, then the city is held liable for it. Anyways, we've moved forward. You know, nobody has been arrested. Mm -hmm. Actually, the police, as always, help folks out. It just is disappointing sometimes where some members of the media or on social media, they start something and it just runs wild. I get both amazed and amused sometimes by it, but mm -hmm. it's life, you gotta move forward. All right, well, we appreciate the time as always. We'll look forward to chatting again uh, next month. Sounds good. Go Pack. <laughs>